Well, hello, my lovely Facebookers. How are you all? It's Motivation Monday. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm excited because it's super sunny. Have you seen the weather out there? Amazing. So it's going to be one of those weeks and we're all getting ready for summer. So I wanted to share this specifically with you about getting rid of that stubborn belly fat. So that's what we're talking about today. I'm just waiting for a couple of people to join us in live. But if you are joining live or if you are catching the replay, thank you so very much. My name is Lisa Barwise. I consider myself the kick-ass wellness alchemist on a mission in the transformation of women around the world, strong of mind, body and character. I'm the creator of Warrior Goddess Kettlebell Training and the author of its 28 day and wheel of the year programs. And I'm here to talk about the thing that we all want to know about, which is getting rid of that stubborn belly fat. I hear it all the time. Every time I speak to people, they're like, well, how do I get rid of this? And how do I get rid of the belly, etc., etc." So we're going to share that with you today. So I can see people coming on board. Hello, Debbie. Hello, Sharon. I think I saw Jim in there too. Um, lovely to have you on board. And there's Teresa on too. If you have any specific questions, through that or you want to make a comment you can go ahead and do that you can give me a hello you can tell me where on the world you're coming from I will happily answer as I go along so today I wanted to talk about stubborn belly fat so I'm going to give you the lowdown and then I'm going to give you some ideas and then I'm going to give you some shortcuts at the same time would that be good because I know that sometimes when you get the answers from um nutritionists and fitness professionals like myself you don't like the answer <laughs> you don't like it so I'm going to try to give you things that you can act straight away okay so first the thing that I need to tell you about stubborn belly fat is that um first things first when we look at the idea the ideal shape of a woman and we see the things on Instagram and we see the things on Facebook and we see the things on all the social media of women that are obviously fitness professionals or bikini models or are um, uh, you know physique athletes they spend all of their time working on their body in that way okay so what they're doing is you know they're 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 committing to go into the gym they they plan and prep their food they do everything that they can and usually they only hold that um body shape for 3 to 4 months of the year the rest of the time they are spending their time you know building muscle which can make them in their bulking phase a little bit more fluffier so what i'm trying to tell you is that one it's almost impossible to keep abs all year round it's just impossible because that's not what the human body is supposed to look like. Um, and also in terms of the, the, the body fat percentage you need to be at in order to maintain that. So it's not, um, I'm not saying it's not healthy. It's just really, really difficult. And usually people who are in that condition all year round are people whose job it is to do that. Okay. So this is not your job. You just want to look a little bit leaner. You just want to lose a little bit of, of, of the extra, you know, whittle the waist a little bit and a little bit of that swim ring as one of my clients likes to call it. So I want you to, first of all, set your sights at the right um, position. Hello, Bridget, you're most welcome. So I want you to, you know, have, have actual realistic expectations of that. Now that said, the other thing that I also need to let you know is that the answer to ridding yourself of stubborn belly fat is not to diet and cut calories beyond literally little small portions of peas on your plate, okay? It's not about drastic cutting of calories. However, it is about nutrition. Normally when um, specifically to do with stubborn belly fat, it's a couple of, there's a couple of processes in there that you need to look at to help your body to deal with that. But understand that you cannot out crunch, out exercise, out squat uh, a bad diet in relation to losing stubborn belly fat. So you got that? So you need to understand that it comes from nutrition. In fact, when it comes to stubborn belly fat, it's 90% nutrition and 10% exercise, presupposing that you've already done some exercise. So what happens for, for in terms of, if you want to understand the journey of, a, of a, a physique athlete that works on getting themselves to the point where they have abs, exposed abs, underneath that layer of skin, is that they've spent nine months building muscle. So they've built muscle on, you know, in their legs, their shoulders, their arms. They have spent a lot of money, uh, time and effort building that lean muscle. And then they spend 
three months, possibly up to three months, stripping away the fat to, to expose that lean muscle. And that is the process. Now, again, we're not physique athletes. We don't necessarily want to spend all of our time and effort doing that. So how do we do that? It's still the same process. You still need to focus on building lean muscle. And the reason why this is important is you do at some point need to start reducing calories because you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose, to lose fat. However, when you're in a constant calorie deficit, i.e. a diet, forever and ever and ever, millions of things happen to you. One, you become the most miserable cow on the planet because you're starving, you um, you just literally are starving, you're nutritionally starving yourself, so you're miserable, your mental health goes whatever, you get really depressed, you're actually depriving yourself of nutrients and really important foods that you need to be consuming to get your, your not only your body moving but your organs working. So what ends up happening is that you do, you know, a great deal of damage to our bodies. And the amount of ladies that I speak to on a daily basis who say that they have thyroid issues, um, and the reason why you have thyroid issues is because you've been on a diet for 20 years. I mean, come on ladies, we all know we have. We've been on a diet for 20 years. We think that, you know, when I say to them that you're, you know, you're, eat, you're not eating enough food, they're all like, oh, I eat too much, I eat too much. But when I calculate people's calories and their macros and what they need to be consuming, on average, most ladies are between 500 and even up to 700 calories short per day, okay? It's ridiculous. It literally just makes me look, look I'm all aghast with this. <laughs> so what I, need to add, what I need to tell you is this. You cannot continue to cut calories and cut calories. There is a, there is a floor to that that's going to eventually cause you metabolic issues, thyroid issues, etc. So you want to start to focus on building lean muscle. And you want to do that anyway. And the reason why you want to do that anyway is because you want that sculpted, toned, tight, de-wobbled look anyway, okay, to your body. So, you know, I do understand that for us, you know, abs and a flat stomach represent a certain thing. Personally, I'd rather work on my bum because if you build your butt, um, that's the thing that people see more of the time versus the weight. But I understand that we also just want to narrow that and we want to get healthy as well because it's not good to have the a lot of visceral fat in your midsection. So, you need to start building these lean muscles. So this is why the exercise becomes important. So we can diet and diet and diet and diet. We wreck our th thyroids, which we, if we, even if we are over-exercising or under-exercising, we can do. So we need to have balanced exercise. But it's not what you think, ladies, okay? It doesn't have to be hours and hours in the gym. What I've found is that three 30-minute workouts or even up to 45-minute workouts are all that you need to get you there. You need to add something either um, you know, high intensity body weight training or ideally you wanna add weights and that's why I, you know, I'm a proponent of kettlebell training because it is so good for us. So you wanna either do it that way and this is gonna help you to sculpt the body. It's gonna help you to build that lean muscle. It's gonna give you the tightness that you want but it's also gonna help burn those extra calories that you're going to need to burn to, uh, rather than cutting the calories from consuming. Does that make sense? So that's what the exercise can be for you is that one, it's helping you to build the muscle, but also it helps you to cut the calorie. It helps you to cut calories or to start to reduce your calorie intake, which is gonna eventually help you to lose the fat. So you need to build the lean muscle. Now the problem with, with building lean muscle is you can't do that when you're in what we call a calorie deficit. So this is why I'm a great proponent of carb cycling. So what does carb cycling mean? What does it mean for getting rid of that stubborn belly fat and how can you make it really simple? I'm going to make it really simple for you right now. You just need to eat more carbs and more food on the days that you do heavy exercise. The more exercise you do, the more you can eat and eat you must. If you do not eat after doing that sort of heavy weight training or you know, into high intensity uh, workouts, you are losing the opportunity to build that lovely, juicy, curvy, lean muscle and to boost your metabolism, which is ultimately gonna make it easier for you to lose fat, okay? And then on the days where you don't do a lot of activity, you just don't eat as many carbs and in fact, you can reduce your calories. And it's that simple. Now to make it even more simple, our body actually really enjoys, specifically if you're in your early 40s and maybe 
perimenopausal or indeed menopausal, but our body really enjoys getting our fiber from liquid. Okay, so if you're not somebody who's gonna eat a lot of fibrous products anyway, like you're not gonna eat a lot of green uh, salads and you're not gonna eat lots of green vegetables, then the best thing for you to do is blend them up and have yourself some superfood shakes, some other protein shakes to supplement that throughout the day. It also means it's more easily absorbed. It also means it's more easily um, uh, digested in the body and it goes straight to where it needs to go. And it's gonna help you to, to move everything along as well, which is also part of the, of the fat burning process. The other thing that normally happens with regards to this getting you know stubborn belly fat uh, is to do with the efficiency of which you burn fat, which is really important, and the efficiency of which you digest foods. Uh, so basically what we're talking about here is our two, two big elimination processes, our digestive process, which is uh, elimination, and our liver or our detox process, and liver is our um, detox and our fat burning organ. So we need to look after both of these. So two key tips for that would be you need to look at probiotics or fermented foods. So either taking a probiotic supplement um, or um, fermented foods like, you know, kombucha or kimchi or sauerkraut, or you can drink kefirs. If you've no idea what I, that I've just maybe been spouting a foreign language, you can also try taking an apple cider vinegar balm in the morning to help with the, that digestive process. And then the other thing is looking at the detoxification organ, which is the liver, okay? So you need to think about how to make that work really well. Uh, milk thistle is a great supplement that you want to definitely um, incorporate um, on a regular basis, especially if you're somebody who enjoys a little gin and tonic or a glass of wine like we all do you want to make sure that your liver is functioning well um, and that's one of the herbs that will help to stimulate that well so if you are looking at these elimination processes this is going to help the other thing that you may need to look at is eliminating some things from your diet usually when, when, when ladies actually have stubborn belly fat, it's not actually fat. Most of the time it's bloatedness. I've had two clients in the last couple of um, weeks and months that I have suggested just reducing the amount of wheat that they consume. So maybe having wheat days or um, uh, yeah, have days of the week where they can still eat wheat, but the rest of the time cutting back. And they've literally reduced this, the, the centimeters, like four, four to five centimeters from their waist overnight from actually cutting that out of their diet. So wheat is a big one. Dairy is the second big one. So again, having either dairy-free days or if you can just have a day where you have your dairy. Um, normally on feast days, we're a little bit more relaxed. We have discretionary calories. That's the way that you can do that. So um, these are the two triggers that can generally mean that what you have is not actually fat, what you actually have is bloatedness, and by reducing those two things, you'll really see the difference. And then the other thing is sugar belly. Yep, couldn't have a conversation about stubborn belly fat without talking about, well, sugar and hormones is the, this is the last one I'm going to talk about. So sugar, the reason why we, uh, and I'm, I'm going to say this out, out loud, I am Lisa, I am a chocoholic, I eat chocolate every single day. But what I've realized is I can choose the quality of my chocolate, which really uh, changes things up, and I can also choose to not eat as much of it because I don't actually need a lot of it now. When I eat really well, when I hit my macros and I hit my calories, when I focus on proteins and I focus on fats, plus the fiber from green leafy vegetables, I ain't hungry for lots of junk. I really am not. I still have a little bit of dark chocolate because I have a little bit of a routine that when I come home and I, you know, I'm sitting down and I'm answering emails after classes and I've had my dinner, I really do enjoy a nice cup of tea and a wee square of dark chocolate. And that's, that's okay with me. So actually sometimes the square can be this big, but it's still allowed in my macros, it's still allowed in my calories, and it works really well for me. I enjoy it and I have it every day, but I don't crave it. I'm not starving for junk food. I And I don't sit and binge on food because I'm just, I'm too stuffed to even want to do that. If I am hungry before bed, I'll generally have a bowl of porridge or I'll have another superfood shake before I go to bed and I'm sorted, and that, that kind of deals with my cravings. But normally when I'm craving chocolate, it's either hormonal, um, it's either a magnesium thing, so I'm not getting enough green leafy vegetables, or I'm magne magnesium deficient, or 
I'm hormonal. So the last thing I want to talk about is hormones. So sometimes belly fat is not belly fat. It's actually a dumping ground for hormones. <laughs> How about that for a wonderful analogy? It's a dumping ground for hormones. So that basically means that as we get older, um, hormones start to play a massive part in the way that our body shape is put together. As we uh, move into the mid 35s, 40s, 40, 45s, we are having a decrease of estrogen and an increase of progesterone, which basically makes us more and more and more square. So as you know, it's weird that as women get older, we end up looking more like men. As men get older, they end up looking more like women. Um, you know, they're more curvy and, and stuff. It's it's very strange. But that's what happens with hormones. As their, as their testosterone reduces, they get curvier as we, uh, as our uh, estrogen plummet, believe it or not, our testosterone increases and we start to square out. So in order for us to combat that, we have two main um, hormones that we need to look after. Cortisol, which triggers, uh, which makes us more stress sensitive, and the remnants of cortisol when it's not dealt with and it's just kind of hanging around, gathers in our midsection. And insulin, which is our fat burning hormone, which is really linked to estrogen a lot of the time as well. So we need to look after this hormone balance. So how do we get balance with regards to our hormones? Really easily. Carb cycling does it really well. High fiber foods, superfoods that I've talked about. Basically everything we've talked about will actually also regulate your hormones. So carb cycling is just that you don't consume as much carbs. You literally leave your carbs for post exercise. You maybe have a little bit of carbs but you don't focus on carbs in the morning. You focus on fats and proteins. You can throw a little bit of carbs in there. Maybe you skip carbs throughout the, the middle of the day and, play, um, and uh, plan on having all of your carbohydrates or the mother load of your carbohydrates after you've earned them after exercise. And that is the way for you to balance your hormones. When you focus more on protein and plants and also really high quality um, good fats, you'll also notice that your hormones begin to to regulate as well. I've noticed that with all of my clients who maybe would have had hormonal issues previously, once they've started um, a carb cycling process, once they've focused on uh, superfoods, on their proteins, on their fats and on their fiber, they've noticed a really big change. So, oh Charlie, you're most welcome. So that's that's the that's the crux of it ladies this is the secrets i'm sharing with you about um getting rid of that stubborn belly fat if you've only just joined be sure to go watch it from the very beginning because there's lots of juicy information so what are the answers here's me rounding things up so what are the answers you basically need to understand that you need to build lean muscle whilst shedding fat and reducing your calories will not get you there as you re continue to reduce calories the bodies will go into starvation mode it will then hold on to all fat specifically your stubborn belly fat because it thinks it is dying basically i mean really if you're, you're starving yourself what are what, what is your body going to do it's just going to hold on to the fat and go you can't have it in case i need it so you can't get that reduction in calories or that calorie deficit by reducing calories alone you need to increase exercise then you need to look at exercise that works really well at both building lean muscle and uh, shedding fat at the same time. So you want to look at sculpting exercises, high intensity interval training and uh, strength training work really well with regards to that. And why we recommend kettlebell training and things like yoga shred, which work really well. Then you have, uh, so that's step one. So you're building the lean muscle and you're shredding the fat at the same, at the same time. Step two was looking at your elimination processes, your digestion and your liver function. Digestion can be helped with probiotics, fermented foods, apple cider vinegar bombs. If you want to know more about that, get in touch. I'll help you with that. All of this information is in my 28 day program and are always included in any of my body shape change programs. And then the other one is liver detoxification. Milk thistle is a great herb to add, especially after weekends where you've had a few, had a few. but also if you're dealing with hormonal issues, you need the milk thistle to help the body to regulate that. And the other thing I wanted to tell you, so that was, and then the third thing was how to balance your hormones. Um, Basically, carb cycling is the best way that I know how to balance hormones, focusing on uh, fats and proteins, increasing your protein um, to 30 grams of protein per every meal, trying to get 30 grams of protein 
upon 30 minutes to one hour of waking also really helps and focusing on protein and plants and healthy fats so the plants um, really good for fiber as we move into a perimenopause and menopausal state fiber becomes so important and you need to increase that so the thing that I'm going to help you with and I wanted to chat to you about this um, just as we're finishing up today is that I've had the most exciting weekend filled with women all wanting to look good and feel good and get healthy and I had been asked over and over about you know I really want to try you know adding more protein into my diet but sometimes protein shakes I don't like them I can't drink them uh, what else could you recommend? I really want to add more greens into my into my diet, but again, I don't necessarily want to go out and shop and chop and cook them. How can you do that? So what I have done is I've gone and created, and I'm just about to hit go on this right now, which I have. Um, I've gone and created a summer package for you that includes superfoods, that includes um, other other superfoods to help you with your with, with regards to shakes and breakfasts and getting protein and carbs in there and also to help you with um, your hair your nails your skin which is what ladies always ask me about and also um, adding in if you want the yoga shred which is the most fabulous easy class for complete beginners people who haven't exercised in a while who literally want a 30 minute serious sweaty blast to taper in their waist and build their booty. I have been doing this now solidly for two weeks and I just shared a photo in our tribe of what it's done to my body in two weeks. All I have done in the last two weeks is ensure that I'm getting my 30 grams of protein uh, in my uh, as I break my fast. I'm taking my hydration potion. I'm having my superfood supplements every single day and I've been doing yoga shred in addition to the classes that I teach three times a week and boys are boys are boys just three three 30 minute sessions a week and I have noticed the changes in my strength in my in my butt and in my belly too so I've just gone and pressed um, go on that if you want to go onto my Facebook uh, profile you will see this the summer shred information package I have decided just to make it easy for you guys. I mean, I can't, I don't know what else to do other than to go here. This is it. Follow this process. This will work for you. Sometimes I know that it's difficult. We're really busy. We don't like the taste of things, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I am here just to provide this for you because I just want to make things easy. I just want to make things easy. I just want you to get results. I want you to feel good. I want you to look good. I want you to enjoy your summer and stop stressing about being overweight or being too wobbly or being whatever. Just get back control one step at a time, you can do this. So it includes everything from, as I said, a 10 day shred in there to get those first five pounds off like that so that you'll literally feel motivated and excited. Then continual support for another four and a half weeks um, with this nutrition in addition to some menu plans and recipe ideas, etc. And you can add those yoga shred classes in there too, which I 100% wholly cannot tell you how awesome they are. They leave me feeling sore and out of breath and shredded. And as I said, I just shared the photographs of my own abs that are finally coming through after a little bit of time off. So it works, 100% it works because I've tested it for you. So I hope that was helpful. We can do it. We can do it together. That's the most important thing that I've learned over this weekend is that girls coming together literally can rule the world. So if you are looking to get a part of our tribe, to be a part of the community, whether you want to join uh, the Warrior Goddesses or our Strong and Sassy Sisterhood, we are all here to help you to achieve whatever body and lifestyle goal you, you want. So go ahead. Can't wait. If you want to watch the replay, if you're not catching this live, go ahead and watch the replay. I'm going to post that link to um, the information about this particular summer uh, shred that I'm offering you help with. Um, and then just get in touch. PM me, email me at hello at warriorgoddesskettlebelltraining.com. Whatever way you want to get in touch. And if I can help you, I'm here to serve. So until then, enjoy your Monday. And I look forward to connecting with you all soon. 